When the U.S. Constitution was signed in 1787, it authorized the establishment of a new federal district for the new nation. Three years later, in 1790, President George Washington was given permission to choose the actual site. A potential location was identified here at the confluence of the Potomac and Anacostia rivers. It lay between the already thriving port cities of Alexandria, Virginia, and Georgetown, Maryland. And it was also conveniently right in the middle of the northern and southern states. At the time, much of present-day Washington itself was covered with low hills and trees. It probably looked a lot like this stretch of the Potomac River today. But in the late 18th century, the region around the Potomac wasn't exactly wild. Flanking both banks of the river were farms and plantations, many of which had been here for more than a century. One of the largest belonged to George Washington himself. It's known as Mount Vernon and stands on a spot high above the Potomac River, south of Alexandria. Washington's grand house is now a museum. He took over his family's plantation here in the 1750s. Washington went on to become one of America's biggest landowners at the time. Hundreds of slaves worked the fields at Mount Vernon, where Washington grew tobacco, wheat, and corn, while also experimenting with a wide range of other crops. His operations here were far-reaching, from agriculture to fishing to liquor. Mount Vernon once had the largest distillery in the country, which produced up to 11,000 gallons of whiskey a year. Thanks to his operations at Mount Vernon, Washington knew well why the chosen site for Washington, D.C. would be a good one. As a teenager, he had surveyed and created the first maps of what became the city of Alexandria. Later, it was from Alexandria's port that he exported wheat and other products from Mount Vernon. He knew that this port and the port of Georgetown on the opposite bank of the river would be useful assets to the nation's new capital. Placing it on the Potomac would also provide an important access route to the Ohio Valley, which could help the nation expand to the west. Washington finally decided to establish the new district and its 10-mile square right over the confluence of the Potomac and Anacostia rivers. Maryland and Virginia would both provide the land and turn over their ports of Georgetown and Alexandria. Washington then hired a French artist and engineer named Pierre L'Enfant to design a plan for a new capital. And even though it was to be named after Washington himself, he is said to have always referred to it only as the federal city. 